Welcome everyone, this is John Sheely as Director of Research and Development for imadaytrader.com. I'm going to talk about Average True Range, ATR. I'm going to talk about how they're actually created and how you can use ATR to set up an entry stop loss as well as a profit objective. But as you know, we must review our risk disclaimers. Trading carries a high degree of risk and trading may not be suitable for all persons. Past returns are not indicative of future results. Please review our risk disclaimer very carefully. Additionally, I place our hypothetical disclaimer as well. In IamADayTrader.com, we create a great amount of research and the creation of indicators and strategies. Like other research firms, we use hypothetical data to create our discoveries. Please review our hypothetical disclaimer very carefully. We start with true range. This is the highest value of either the high of today minus the low of today, a normal range, or the close of yesterday minus the low of today, or also the highest value of the high of today minus the close of yesterday. You have these three potential calculations and whatever is the highest value is going to be used for true range. Of course, the average true range calculates the average of the true range. Now, I agree there is a difference between an average true range and an ATR in, based upon Wells Wilder calculations. Many platforms, however, use the average true range to create the ATR. Now you're looking at the chart and you're getting an idea of what the ATR is used for. Here we're looking at the daily price action of a stock, Microsoft. Now notice that we have a huge gap above the previous day. Now the range of the day is much smaller than the actual change from the previous day. So the ATR uses this calculation so they can give you a true volatility value based upon each day. For example, this was a big gap up here in Microsoft. Then there was a big gap down. That range is much smaller than the differences between the low and the close of the prior day. Same thing over here, a big another gap up. Well, that range is relatively small as connected to that high and the close of the prior day. So true range and then average it is so you can get an idea of the true volatility from one day to the other. Now here I'm showing you the average true range as a indicator. And as you can tell, when they had those huge gaps, that had an increase in the ATR values. And sure enough, that indicator is going to be getting to move up. And you can begin to see that prices are beginning to just relatively go flat and the ranges begin to get smaller and smaller. Well, so the ATR begins to fall because the ranges themselves are getting smaller and smaller. Again, the ATR is calculating the volatility of this particular stock Microsoft. Now I'm showing you a couple of stocks again. This is Apple and Ford and there's a reason I'm showing the prices for a long time ago because the Ford was actually underneath two dollars. So it was a very small range but it was a very low price. But look at the average true range. It's going to still calculate the ATR based upon the range and the very small range of the price of Ford. So you can see during the prices move around that the ATR rises and falls. This is rather normal. Same thing for Apple. A much higher price at that particular time and the ATR was actually as high as $8.80. On an average day, Apple at that particular time was moving at $8.80. That is beginning to rise up when there is larger, larger ranges and beginning to move down when these ranges on an ATR was very small. So as you can tell, ATR goes down 
and up all the time in changes of volatility. Now let me begin to show you how you can use ATR. Notice that the prices, this is the two moving averages, and you see the price began to move up and reach these level highs here. Now I could use that based upon price, but this is the wheat commodity. And so the price would be exactly the same as regards to FCX, a very volatile stock. And yet, notice that the price has actually moved very similar in regards to price rise in regards to the moving average. This rise was the same number in regards in terms of average to range. So price has moved up for the moving average and it rallied about 4.5 average to range. And here, if I was actually following this particular stock and it also reached the highs, well, this rally was of actually 4.6 average to range. So I can actually follow the price action in wheat, which is totally different than this particular stock, but I get an idea exactly on the size of the range from above the moving averages. So I can actually use these to look for a particular profit objective in regards to whether or not it's wheat or whether or not it's a stock. Let me show you another use for average to range. We have a moving average that's rising up and this is Apple. I'm showing you the Australian dollar, Forex. Now notice the price rally from this moving average, which is the same, and it begins to rise to average to range above the moving average, four, and six. And you can see that when prices get above six average to range, prices begin to have a larger correction in regards to the trend. Now notice average to range rise of two, four, and six average to range. So as you can tell on Apple, it got overbought at basically six average to range above the 50 period simple moving average. Using the same strategy of using ATR, here I'm looking at the Australian dollar and I'm seeing this rally, but how high? It was six average to range. So in other words, I have the ability to measure how high prices are from the moving average, not based upon price, since one is a stock, one is a currency, but instead it is based upon average to range. Let me show you something else that you can do with ATR. I'm showing you a particular strategy that looking to sell underneath returns into a bearish trend. You've entered this particular trade. I'm showing the example of two stocks. Now they're totally different. This is a stock of $26 and the Google at that particular time was above 600. So in this particular case, I'm using the ability to put a profit objective based upon average to range of this particular stock. So I can use the same entry, same strategy, exit at the same way, but it's based upon average to range rather than price from our entry levels. So as you can see, I can now take a look at different commodities different stocks, even different currencies, and have an idea of where to look for potential profit targets or stop losses based upon the daily average to range, ATR. For example, Apple at that particular time was $8.50. ExxonMobil on an average day on that particular time, the average to range was 90 cents. Bank of America, at that particular time, on an average day, the average to range just for one ATR was 24 cents. And so you may wonder, how can I use and trade each one of these different stocks exactly the same way? Because their price and their movement is totally different. Well, it's basing it upon not price, but it's based upon a one average to range entry. So if I enter a trade and put a profit objective of one ATR, I know exactly 
how high, if I'm being long, I'm going to look for a profit objective. I'm looking for a profit objective, $8.50, one ATR. Well, what about if I went long ExxonMobil? Well, how far do I go for this particular trade? 90 cents. What about Bank of America? So I'm looking for a trade for Bank of America, one average shoe range, just like the other two stocks, but what's my profit objective? One ATR, in this particular case, of 24 cents. Now let's put this information in regards to our normal trading for crude and our tech charts. Here I'm showing you a couple of trades here in regards to based upon a 34B. We have a bearish trend and we're now having closes underneath the 8 exponential. We're going short on several possible trades. I'm showing you in this particular case a profit objective of 8 cents. Basically a fixed amount. But let me show you that there's another way of not putting a profit target of 8 cents, a particular setting for an 8 cents, but use it as an ATR target. Now we have the same entry as we had before, but now instead of having a profit objective of a certain amount of cents, we're going to put a profit target at 2.25 average to range from our entry. So as you can tell, prices came in. Where do we exit? Based upon 2.5 average to range underneath our entry price. Now in this particular case, the volatility was very similar in regard to these targets based upon an eight cent profit objective versus the use of the 2.25 ATR. Volatility doesn't stay the same all the time. Now we're going to take a look at another chart in which the market was more volatile at that particular time. We're still going to take the 34B as sales, but our profit objective now is based upon average shoe range, not eight cents. And you're looking at the profit target reached is 15 cents instead of eight cents. Well, where did the 15 cent get calculated from? 2.25 average to range. And it's because at that particular time, the market was more volatile. The ranges of the day were much larger. And so the profit objectives were also getting larger and larger. Not based upon price and not based upon a certain cent level, but based upon our size, based upon average to range. So as prices began to move down, now we would not be looking a profit objective of eight cents. You would be looking a profit objective of 15 cents. Here's another 34 B cell. What was our profit target? It's not eight cents. It's not a fixed amount. It's based upon ATR. In this particular case, a profit objective of 13 cents. Finally, I want to show you how you can use an ATR as both your entry and your profit objectives in any market. In this particular case, I'm talking about a stock. Let's say that we have a previous demand or support price action. So prices begin to fall and there's actually a zone that if prices comes in, properly bounces back up and doesn't violate that band, then I'll look for an entry of a trade based upon prices touching this zone and then beginning to rise. Where am I going to take profits? It's based upon, you got it, average to range. How many number of shares am I going to enter? Once again, it's based upon how much dollar risk you want to take and the use of average to range. So I'm looking at an example here that prices have come down. It had down bounce off this zone. It is triggered into a long trade. Now notice it got down, but the stop loss is was not triggered. What was it based upon? You've got it, average to range. We also had a rally to a particular price level and it was based upon average to range. So in others, every piece of this strategy was using average to range. How many number shares? What is the size of the stop loss? What is the size of our profit objective 
And then, of course, we have a break-even part of the code as well. But every piece of this automatically can be executed based upon average true range. Now, as you can tell, I'll be discussing average true range in many, many different ways. I'll be talking about using ATR, not only our commodities, but in regards to Forex, stocks, bonds, different products that we're going to be taking. But we're going to use average to range as our stop loss levels and our profit objectives rather than a fixed amount of points or ticks. This is John Sheely at imadaytrader.com.